Hey, this is Professor Wilbur from dragandropcode.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to build an American Sign Language app. Okay, and basically, you can type in any word, click sign it, and then it finger spells C. using ASL for you. Oh. Um, right now, it goes every e. two seconds and shows you one of these images. E. Okay, so we're going to learn how to do this. You're going to have to use a repeat loop in here, or at least an index that walks through the, the text of the word, grab each letter, and then you know display it on the screen. And, and you also use a timer for the animation part of it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna create a new app and I'm gonna call it ASL app. Okay, and when you create a when you create an app, you have to categorize it in Thunkable. So I'll, I'll just call this education um, and then use the drag and drop builder and say create. The drag and drop builder just lets you kind of, you can put your components anywhere you want and just drag and drop them as opposed to, you know, the, the layout way that uh, the old Dunkable, or you can still do it that way in Dunkable. Okay, so here's my screen for my ASL app. And I'm just gonna have an image at the top, which kind of shows the, the letter, you know, the A or whatever the letters are. Okay, and then I'm gonna have a button and a text input. So this is where the user is gonna type in their letter and we can put some stuff around that in a bit. And then a button is to, you know, we'll just say sign it on here. Okay. And I can just kind of drag those guys around to, to do stuff. So, you know, real basically, that's what we're going to do. Next thing I want to do is go to my assets. And these are like what media is going to be in your program. And I want to grab some files. And I'm actually going to, if you go to drag and drop code.com, I've got this zip file. And it's basically an image for every letter. Okay, and I'll show you that in a second. But once you get the zip file, show in Finder, um, and this will be a little bit different on a Windows machine, of course, but then if you double click the zip file, it gives you a folder. And then if you look inside that folder, you get all these images. And notice there's one for every letter and there's a blank .jpeg as well. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab all this stuff and then I wanna drag all these guys into my media files here at Thunkable. Oops, sorry. There it goes. Um, so it's just going to load those in as assets. And of course, they're not going to show up yet, right, in the program, but they're just part of, of the app. Okay, so for instance, I could say, you know, let's show a.jpg and it's going to show, show a. And you'll notice it's a little skewed. I'm just going to make it so on this image, you know, um, we'll use stretch and, but let's just kind of resize it. So it looks a little bit better. Okay. I think that's, that's, that's pretty good. Okay. Anyway, that's a quick and dirty showing one image. Now let's go to the blocks and let's show how to code it. So the user can type anything and click, click sign it. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is first thing I want to do is actually change the name of this button. So I'm going to call it the sign it button. Okay. It's always good to give your um, components descriptive names. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the blocks and on the sign it button, what I want to do is I'm just going to show some, some letter. Okay. And what I'll do is just, I'll say image dot set image dot picture. And I'll just say for now, a dot JPEG, you know, let's just start do, do some simple things or I could choose a different one like B dot JPEG. So let's test this. A shows up because I set that in the designer. Um, no matter what, if I click sign it, it goes to B. Okay. So that's, that's what we're trying to get, get at here. Okay. And really what we want to do is kind of grab the letters in the user's text and use those. So let's, let's first set a goal of, let's grab the first letter in what they type in text input and show that. Okay. And the way we have to do that is we kind of got to get the text from whatever they typed in. Okay. And we need to get the first thing in that. Okay. And, and I can go to text and text has this thing called get. Okay, it's like indexing. It's like, give me one of the things in a longer piece of text. So I'm gonna grab that. And I wanna grab from whatever the user's typed, which is text input one. And right now I'm just gonna grab the first thing they type. And that's the picture I'm gonna show. Now, this is gonna give me just the letter. Okay, so I have to be, 
you know, smart and do a join. Okay. And what I want to do is grab the letter. Okay. So let's say that's A or B or whatever. And then I need to add .jpg. Okay. That's the extension for the file. And remember, if I go back to the designer, I've got all these assets and there's some letter .jpg. All right. So in my blocks, what I'm doing is just kind of cobbling that stuff together to set my picture. Okay, I hope if I run this, I can type in, you know, some letter, let's type in D, and I think it should show D up here when I click sign it. Okay, cool. So that's, that seems to be, be working. Okay, so I'm going to go back to editing. Obviously, we don't want to just show one letter. Okay, and what we're going to need is a variable, and I'm going to call it index, and it's going to keep track of where we are in our... Um, in the in the text string right as we walk through whatever word they type in we're going to use this variable index to to you know show the the current one and so i'm just going to change this and it's going to start out as one but it's going to change right it's a variable it's going to change i think this should still run because index is one um it should it should show me the first item in the text input with the dot jpg so let's just try it i think if i type in z I get Z. Okay, cool. Okay, so right now we're, we're getting there, but now we need a timer. Okay, and this is the animation part of things. And so I'm going to go over to timers, click on the plus, and it's going to add a timer. And let's just do every two seconds. Okay, and we're going to keep enabled false because we don't want it to be on it at, to start. And loops is going to be true because we want it to run a bunch of times. Okay, so I'm going to submit that. Now I've got a timer and, you know, really that's where the action's going to take place. Timer.fires. So every time the timer fires, so every two seconds, this will get called once the timer gets put on. So really what I want to do is, you know, do my activity in this animation part. This is the repeated stuff. And when they click sign it, really all I'm going to do is just turn my timer on. And notice there's this timers.start. It's the same as setting enabled to true is calling timers.start. Okay, so right now when they click sign it, I'll start my timer and then it will continue, continuously show a picture. And I think if I run it now, it's not gonna change the picture, but it's gonna kind of grab Z. And I, and I don't even know if you'll see it. So it's changing Z, 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 Z every time. Um, but that, that's what's happening. Okay, so now we need to make it so this index changes. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is go to variables, and I'm going to set index. And what I want to do is set to itself plus one. So I'm going to increment the index. I want to make it bigger every time. So I'm going to grab index there. So right now, when they click sign it, it's going to add one to the index and then start showing stuff. Okay. And then every time it fires, index will get bigger. We're not worried about the, the, the end of it yet. So that's going to be a problem. Uh, but let's see what happens. And I, you know, I noticed the first time it fires, it's going to go from one, it's going to already be at two. Okay. So let's, let's kind of start the variable off at zero. Okay. Actually, I could leave that at one, but let's set the variable index to zero before we do the timer. Okay, and then, you know, it'll be, it'll be cool because um, when it actually gets to the timer, it's gonna increment to get to, to be one to start. Okay, then two, then three, whatever. Okay, I think we're doing pretty good. Let's run this guy and let's just say zoo, okay? And I'm gonna click sign it. Should wait two seconds, there's Z. There's O and then O again. Okay, so for the third letter and then it's done. All right, uh, back to editing. So one thing we need to do is kind of stop the timer when it gets too far. So I like what we're doing, but this is actually just gonna keep firing forever. And it's gonna gra try to grab like, you know, kind of characters that don't even, aren't even in the text because the text only has whatever they type, say three letters, okay? So I'm going to just do a if statement and I'm going to grab if 
And I'm going to say, you know, if the index is greater than something, so I don't know, I, you know, basically I want to know what the length of the text input is. Okay, so the text input is text. So I'm just going to say, if the index is bigger than the length of whatever the user typed, okay, then I, I just need to stop my timer. All right, so if my index gets too big, I need to stop my timer. So I'm gonna go down to timer or timer one, and I'm gonna call stop. And otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and change my picture. Okay, so you know now, you know, I think that's gonna just stop things when it should. We need to get rid of that A, it shouldn't appear there, right? But uh, let's type in dog, click sign it. Uh, D should come up. O and G. Okay, so I think that's that's pretty good. At some point, we need to blank it out, maybe, uh, and we and we could do that. Um, let's go back to editing. So when the index gets too big, we could stop it, and we could also set the picture to blank. And you know, you you'd have to figure out how you want this to to work, but essentially. You remember there's one file called blank.jpg and the ones we downloaded. And so we're just going to do that. So now I think if I run it, um, if I say cat now, it should do the C, the A, and the T. And then I think it should blank out after two more seconds. Okay, cool. So we're we're doing doing pretty, pretty well. And we could also blank out our text input if we wanted to. At, at, at that point too. And I'm just gonna get get rid of rid of this stuff. Okay, a couple things. You know, let's go back to the designer. We really don't want to start off with A. You know, so in the designer is kind of where you set your initial stuff. And and what I want to do is just set it to blank. I, I could actually just not set it as well. Um, so now I run it and it's blank. And then I can type in dog, click sign it, and it's gonna start doing the D and the O and the G. Okay, anyway, that's a quick and dirty kind of sign language app. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, different things. You know, this is just finger spelling in sign language. You know, so there's all kinds of different sign language things you might do, and you might do some research and, and try to figure out an app to help help with sign language or help learn sign language, right? And, but this one's just a, you know, it, you know, kind of, illustrates animation for you using a timer and also kind of images and 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 how to like cobble together text right because you know we both we both cobbled together text with the join and then we also kind of used the the get right which is kind of extracting a single character you know from a bigger piece of text and that's one you'll use use all the time 